Let's transition now to gait abnormalities. To brainstorm, what is gait? What is normal gait? What is abnormal gait? And again, why is this relevant? This is relevant because our assessment and our intervention should translate into an improvement in quality of life and or life expectancy. This is relevant because gait disorders are common in older adults. This is relevant because gait disorders are a predictor of fun functional decline. This is relevant because functional decline clearly impacts ADLs and IADLs. Functional de decline also correlates with disability and falls. So gait disorders correlate with disability and falls. Why is this relevant? It is relevant because the cause is multifactorial and it's also treatable. Interventions, again, decreases morbidity and mortality. In terms of epidemiology, in non-institutionalized older adults, as much as 20 to 50% of older adults admit difficulty walking, as much as 50% admit a need, a need for some degree of assistance, whether it's a person or whether it's a specialized equipment such as a cane or a walker. Gait changes correlate with age and gait abnormalities. The prevalence is greater with a greater number of underlying medical problems in the older adult. If the older adult has slow speed, if the older adult has three or more underlying medical problems or chronic diseases, or if the older adult has had a stroke, a hip fracture, or any malignancy, it's a clear predictor of gait abnormality and loss of ability to walk. So what is gait? What is gait? Gait is simply the manner in which an individual walks. So it's a particular way of walking on foot. Abnormal gait is characterized by a change in speed such that the speed, the walking speed is slowed. There's a decreased stride length. There's diminished step height. Abnormal gait is also characterized by a deviation from the path of walking, lack of smoothness or asymmetry. And sometimes abnormal gait is described as it simply appears abnormal. Here's a question to consider. Abnormal gait is a consequence of aging. Abnormal gait is a consequence of aging. True or false? And the answer is false. This is a misconception, and it's good to be mindful of ageism, meaning not generalizing or, st or stereotyping simply based on age. So abnormal gait is not necessarily a consequence of aging, but rather it's a manifestation of age-related diseases. Senile gait disorder is a term used to describe certain changes that are noticed in the older adult as the older adult ages. Senile gait disorder is sometimes termed idiopathic gait or essential gait, and it is an age-related gait disorder without any accompanying clinical abnormalities sufficient to make a specific diagnosis. And this is important because evidence supports that individuals with idiopathic gait disorder or senile gait disorder uh, may develop or they're at a higher risk of developing non-Alzheimer's or vascular dementia. In other words, idiopathic gait or senile gait disorder may be evidence of subclinical cardiovascular disease. So individuals with senile gait disorder who are followed have an increased risk of mortality from cerebrovascular disease and or cardiovascular disease. What are some of the characteristics of senile gait disorder? It's characterized by a broad-based gait with small steps, decreased arm swing, smooth po stooped posture, decreased flexion of the hips and the knees, uncertainty and stiffness with turning, difficulty initiating steps, and a predisposition to falls. What are some of the most common causes of abnormal gait? Some of the most common causes of abnormal gait includes degenerative joint diseases, osteoarthritis, degenerative joint diseases, um, acquired musculoskeletal deformities, claudication, post-orthopedic surgery with impairment, cardiovascular diseases with residual effects, or cerebrovascular disease with residual effects, postural hypotension, and visual impairment. Those are some of the most common causes of abnormal gait. Some examples of abnormal gaits include antalgic gait, circumduction, echinovirus, festination, foot drop, foot slap, genu recurvatum, propulsion, retropulsion, scissoring, 
Steppage, Trendelleberg, and Turnblanc.